With the Apple TV limitation of only three concurrent Bluetooth connections, with one already taken up by the remote, leaving only two for our sporting peripherals, it can be a bit of a headache, especially for those owning Kicker Core, Kicker Snap, or Kicker Direct Drive units, where those units don't transmit cadence. Wahoo do supply a cadence sensor with a few of their trainers, but that cadence sensor uses its own Bluetooth channel, leaving your heart rate strap dangling, or if you select your heart rate strap, your cadence sensor is dangling for a direct connection. Here's what you'll encounter on Zwift on Apple TV if you try to exceed those maximum two concurrent Bluetooth connections. Selecting the power source as the Wahoo Kicker over Bluetooth to the Apple TV, it will then automatically select the controllable trainer as well, remembering that's over the one single Bluetooth connection, so it leaves one more left. And if we select the Wahoo Cadence Sensor, that's our two taken up, and if we go and choose a heart rate strap, it comes up with that Bluetooth error right there. Not what we like to see. The alternative is to pull out the mobile phone and use the Zwift companion app to bridge things over Wi-Fi to your Apple TV, or use something like the NPE cable, but that just adds another level of complexity on both sides. One, the mobile phone has to be charged and connected and the Bluetooth works, it's just, sometimes you don't wanna go that way. And the NPE cable, well, it works just fine. It's still a standalone device that does just one thing. It just bridges things, so you've gotta have that configured and sitting within the vicinity of your setup. A simpler solution which works quite well is the Viva Heart Rate Strap by 4i. It's a standalone heart rate strap, just like any other, but it does have bridging capabilities. Here's the unboxing and setup of the Viva Heart Rate Strap with the Wahoo Cadence Sensor to get those three Bluetooth connections humming along with all our data that we need to the Apple TV. So standard heart rate strap, you really can't tell. It has all the special features under the hood. Is the pod itself. We have a user manual in here somewhere which we'll just pack back away and ignore. Nice soft strap, just like any other heart rate strap out there. We will uh, wake the unit up and connect via the mobile phone app over Bluetooth from the phone to the heart rate strap itself for configuration. So we've now brought that alive. We connect to the Viva heart rate strap uh, it also has memory on the unit itself, which is the pop-up there to download activities. We'll ignore that for now. We're just using it as the heart rate and bridge today. So we click on config, and from here we can name it, which is a really handy little feature. We can call it something, because if there's a, quite a few of these in the same room, we can tell which one's which. So let's go with Lamiva. That will do. Close enough. And then we'll reconnect to that device with that name. There we go. Rock and roll from here. We click on, oh, there's the memory thing again. Let's get rid of that. We'll pull out the Wahoo Cadence Sensor, which we want to connect to or bridge with through its Bluetooth connection on the Viva. And we click on Config. From Config, the icon right in the center there, Pair Ant Plus Devices. And right there, we select the bike cadence sensor. You can see bike power there. You can pair any Ant Plus sensor with the Viva heart rate strap, but just cadence for today. We go back to the configuration and we can see there that it's a heart rate strap and it has a paired bike cadence sensor and it saves those forever in the configuration. So back to the configuration here, what you can see is that from the kicker itself, we will get power, speed, which is ignored, and resistance control over that one single Bluetooth connection. And also now from the Viva heart rate connection, we will get cadence because it's bridged through over Ant Plus. Happy days. The pairing process now with an Apple TV, just to make sure it all works. We're here with the kicker selected with one of the Bluetooth connections. We select the Lamiva heart rate and we select the Lamiva cadence sensor and away we go. It's all good, up and running with that single Bluetooth connection sending both heart rate and cadence via the Viva heart rate strap. So for here, I wrote out and did the Innsbruck climb. So 20 minutes, pretty hard and all up. I think it was around 47, 48 minutes or so of riding and then we'll have a look at the data in just a moment. Okay, ride summary here, no heart rate drops, all looks pretty good from there. We'll also jump quickly over to Strava and have a look at the data analysis here. And as we can see, there's no drops in the cadence or heart rate, except where I wasn't pedaling after a few hard efforts. So, all looks pretty good to me. 
So there it is, a nice seamless workaround for that limitation of only two concurrent Bluetooth device connections on the Apple TV. Remembering this is an Apple problem, not really a software problem, so the apps can't get around this. That's why we use solutions like this. Happy days. All right, I'll put links below in this where you can purchase one of these on Amazon US, or you can find these in any of your local bike stores. Right on, thanks for watching.